Hey guys, and how's it going? I got a little bit more time to work on the Jawa Yawa, and uh, we want to go and get into maybe looking to see how much of the paint will come back underneath all this black, probably Krylon spray on job that was put on here. This is all supposed to be red, tank's supposed to be red, side covers are supposed to be red, and possibly these. I think these might be also. So, uh, we played with it in the last video. We got it running and made sure that was okay. Did a little bit of uh, fine tuning with some lacquer thinner and found that it will come off. So, maybe we'll continue on with that. But before we get to that point, I want to take a couple of minutes and fire it up one more time. And uh, we'll pop it through the gears and just make sure that the transmission is okay before we uh, commit to doing a bunch of work on this thing. So, that's where I am right now. I ordered a battery. Battery should be here by Thursday. It was like... 15 bucks for it so we will work with that delinquent one that we have and uh, throw a six volt battery charger on it for firing it up so we get the block underneath it so we get the back wheel off the ground and put some gas in it we'll give her a kick and just run it through the gears yeah, let's hop up there and give her a kick and see how she does whoops right, let's hop up there give her a kick Turn the key on tell. A little drag on it. Second, third, fourth. I think it's only a four speed so. I think it was just running out of gas and it started running lean. Yeah, we're empty. It's got nothing in it. So I think we're okay. I didn't hear a loud clanking. It was kind of weird. The first one, I think it was all the way down in like fifth gear or fourth gear rather, because it was like neutral. And then I had to come all the way back up. Then I, when I went through the gears again, I kind of found them. But I do know that like when you're in the middle of it, if you hold up on it, if you stay there, it's kind of neutral until you let it go again. So this thing, as I said, it serves three purposes. One is the shifter, two is the kickstarter, and then three is that it actually works as a clutch also. So uh, I think we're okay. Anyway, let's go play with paint. So what I'm most curious about is really the gas tank. So I figure, why don't we take the side cover off? And we'll give it a good wipe down with uh, lacquer thinner. Lacquer thinner seems to be our go-to. At least it's going to be our go-to for now. And I'm just worried this, that we're going to find some big boo-boos and bodywork on it. And that's maybe why it got painted. Let's go get some thinner and we'll find out what we have. Shall we? Mm. Even dug out a... New white towel. Give that puppy a good. What for? I kind of work in there a little bit. Somebody put some gold pinstriping on the top of it. 
I don't care about that. Kind of would prefer to see that even go away, so. I'm amazed that this bike starts so easy for a bike that has no choke. That'd be like the easiest bike I... The SL125 starts pretty easy too though. This for a two-stroke, usually it can be finicky, you know? Actually, I don't even care about the center, I just care about the this outer. What do you say we get a little bit more aggressive? Let's go a little... I wonder if I should spread this out like that. Maybe we'll just kind of give her a good. Is this high tech? There's an accident waiting to happen. Let's do something like that. Let that soak for a little bit. And we'll give her a shot again. I had to catch the drippies coming off the rag. Slows up the scotch brake. You're uh, not scotch brake. You know what I mean. Possible somebody painted the tank with something else too. lack of thinner it hardens up so fast evaporates so fast it's like I'm kind of burning through it anything back to the tank see if that did anything for us That's not doing as good as the works are. That's gotta take some effort. I think we have to stay away from the Brillo pad. It's going to damage the paint underneath it. Let's say it's going to take a little while, huh? How's he talking about? Looking at the bench, I've been trying different combinations of things. Uh, pretty much the lacquer thinner seems to be the best bet. And using a kitchen safe uh, Scotch Brite seems to do the best as far as getting it off. But it's really working slow. I even put it in, in a mist bottle. It was kind of misting it on because you know lacquer thinner evaporates so quick. To uh, keep it wet while I was trying to work it, but not uh, a, a great outlook. And you can still see where it kind of seems like it's burning the edges away, whether that was already there before or not. I don't know, but I'm trying to reduce that. So I went with the uh, oven cleaner. A little bit of oven cleaner I think we got. And I threw it on right there just about a couple of seconds ago. You know, I want to see if that will possibly work the black and leave the red alone. So maybe that'll be a solution. Still trying things. Again, that area is all covered with the decal. Worst case is we repaint it, but I would like to have it so the original paint is there. I'm not really sure where I left off because it's the next day and I was trying a bunch of different things to see what would work for loosening the paint up. And I went to Home Depot and you know scoured the aisles trying to find different things and one of the things I grabbed was a graffiti remover. I figured I'd give that a shot. I put it right here. Um, it seems like it's it's kind of tacking up and working, 
but uh, this area seems like the paint comes off much easier than the gas tank does. Possibly maybe the gas tank was painted with a different paint too. It might have actually been, who knows, maybe an automotive type of paint. So I went back to lacquer thinner. Lacquer thinner seems to be the best setup that there is. And the problem with lacquer thinner is it dries up so fast though. So what I ended up doing was I took a paper towel, double paper towel, and then soaked it with lacquer thinner. And then I put plastic over the top of it, keep it from evaporating away and let it kind of soak in and try to come off. But unfortunately it's taking the lower level of paint off too. So I don't think that's going to be a, a viable solution either. And with that, I have a feeling that we're just not going to be able to use the original paint as much as I would want to. And that brings us to an area, I was reading the comments last night on, uh, you know, you, you, you've done a couple of bikes where you just kind of cleaned them up and part once you do a full restoration on this. Well, the problem with that is it's just too expensive. It's too ex expensive in parts and it's too expensive in how much time you're going to put into it. And it's easy to say from, you know, sitting in your armchair, um, why don't you go do this once you go to that if it was mine I would go do this no you wouldn't <laughs> a couple of you would but most of you wouldn't you would not put the effort into you're not going to take the next six months of your life restoring something when uh, you know it's just a toy if it was your favorite bike or family heirloom something like that different story it's not the case here for me it's just a, a fun toy to go play with and see if you can get running and you know go put it around down the street is uh, you know my end goal and with that, you know, I went and I purchased a bunch of things. I grabbed the headlight for it, the headlight bezel, the glass, uh, two nut parts, points, two sets of points, two sets of condenser, something else I got for it. It was a third item. I already forgot what it was. And then someone wrote and uh, ordered and sent me the rubber pieces for here to get that taken care of. But continuing on with that, um, going past that if you're going to go through the problem and take the the process of taking everything apart painting everything the biggest part is chrome the chrome is the most expensive part you're not going to clean this stuff up it, it's you know it's gone there, there's nothing left can you start replacing some of those pieces yeah you can start buying new pipes you can buy new rims you're not going to you're not going to save those rims they're too far gone if you drop it off to go go get chromed, they're going to be four or five hundred dollars a piece. Chroming is not cheap. It'd be easier to find another set of wheels than it would to get those re-chromed, and they're just you know they're gone. So you got to kind of decide what level you're going to go take stuff to. I by cleaning the paint up that was there, what my thought was, and then you clean the rest of this stuff up. It kind of matches. If you repaint it, and you have nice clean shiny paint, and then you have you know exhaust that looks like this and wheels that look like that it, it's just a mix match it doesn't kind of look right so that's why i was trying to go for the you know original look and not get into too much painting all the stuff nothing says you can't come back and you know where it's got you know the frame's got bumps and bruises we can black that stuff out too but you're still going to have the areas that look like they do you know the case is not going to look spectacular when it's cleaned up it's going to look like an old used bike it'll clean up but it's not going to clean up to perfect unless you totally disassemble the engine sandblast all the pieces and you know scotch bright them back clear coat them go through all that trouble i am just not willing to devote that much time to something like this I have other projects. I'd rather work on my double cap with the effort into that than I would into something like this. I'm not saying I don't want to play with it and work on it and get it up and running and riding and getting the mechanicals fixed, but you know, it's easy to say on the internet to somebody else, why don't you do a full restoration on that? Why don't you? <laughs> Tell you what, make me a good offer. It's yours. You, you can do that if you like. If somebody's really that passionate about doing that, uh, I would kick it to the next person. To me, it's just a toy. I'm just looking to go, you know, have some fun with it. Fenders, fenders will probably come back somewhat, but they're not going to be perfect. You know, they're going to have their issues. So what do you do with those? You can drop them off, get them redone, or are you going to uh, get new ones? You add up all the pieces. So say, and we're just going to make up numbers. Say it's, you buy new rims, new exhaust, new pretty much anything that's chrome like oh, a new gas cap coming too uh you know you need a headlight bezel 
directionals, uh, the bezel on there, that bezel, the handlebars, the controllers. You essentially are replacing everything that is chrome on the bike because none of it is really worth it uh, to try to go save or get it re -chromed. So let's say it is, will be conservative, $2,500 worth of either getting stuff re-chromed or replacing. It'd probably be cheaper to replace it than it would be to get this original stuff re-chromed. Let's do four weeks, 8,160. Say 160 hours. And that's at 50 bucks, I mean, what you time. So that's 8,000 bucks. Is it worth $11,000? It ain't worth it. You know, it's, it's just ending up plus what I paid for the bike and, and all the other stuff on top of it. It, it's rare, it's this, it's that, but that is the problem when you're trying to work with things that are so old and you say, I want to bring them back to like they were new. You're better off going to go buy one that's all done or, or nice and new and never had the issues that this one has had in the first place. It'd be a much better valuable outcome of a bike. If you have a bike that was never painted and has original paint and looks good is always going to be much better than a bike that's been repainted. It's always it's worth that much more. An old VW original paint, take California car, rust free, didn't have a bunch of patches welded in it, and you bought that car for fifteen thousand bucks. Or if you took a rotted out one, you put fifteen grand into it and restored it. The one that never had the rust in the first place is still going to be worth much more than the one that you repaired just because of the fact that it's original and it's not patched together. So that is going to guess be my little spiel on this. And so moving forward, we've got parts coming and uh, we'll go and clean it up best we can and uh, just have some fun with it. Unless one of you guys want to make me a uh, uh, outstanding offer on what we have now. So I decided to take a uh, the paper towels and do the same with that uh, graffiti remover and we'll see do we take that all the way out or do we take that part way out we'll see what that does for the tank and uh, one last ditch effort you know let's see what we have going on headlight the wiring looks decent. Doesn't look like it's been abused. These guys are always fun. You guys looking over there for? Pay attention. Stop looking away. I go to the lens, but I think I might have got the wrong one. Says it fits it. You know that works. that one go it's a combination to get that guy out of there yeah, that makes it. Is that all one bulb shouldn't be it's just gonna go flying So again, so that's kind of why I do what I do with the bikes. I want to say that that is all one piece. Uh, if that headlight bulb comes out, I guess it's not going to matter now anyway, is it? Not like I'm hurting it. Just seeing that that lip like it like, looks like it was peeled over. Which is in. 
push it in and turn it maybe? There we go. Yeah, so that bulb comes out from the back and that was part of the one piece of the headlight. Nothing saying that possibly the one that we get, we can't put over that though, right? Check that bulb, see if it's any good. Yeah, we get tape measure. We're gonna measure across. I think that one was like six and a quarter. That looks bigger than that, though. Let's see. Seven, uh, six and three quarters. So I have a feeling that that guy's gonna be too small. Wah, wah, wah. There goes fifteen bucks down the drain. The uh, headlight bulb was good. I put it back in. Cleaned it with glass cleaner, got my oil, oily mitt prints off of it. So let's get into the the grip. This stuff does not move. Does not feel like it clicks into place. So I have a feeling. They may need some love on the inside. It could be that or I'm sure he's pulled the tank off. There's probably some fuses and stuff too. It could be that also. But the tank is nice and gooey right now, so I'm gonna leave that alone. Stuff goes flying out everywhere, right? Something just fell out of it. Is that a dead bug or a piece of switch? <laughs> that way, look like a bee died in. 1985. I would say, yeah, that guy is not going to move very well, is it? Like a mud dauber in there. Let's see. I'd say we probably. Open it down. What's this guy? Horn. I have a feeling maybe we'll take half of it apart at a time. Let me grab my magnetic tray. Bring her up here. Side you want to go for first. Let's go for the easier side first. Get an idea how maybe parts are together I figure this is gonna be a spring some contacts and all that stuff is gonna gonna want to go flying out never to be seen again under the workbench Board right out of there. Yeah, I should grab a pick though. So that just rubs. This is probably the contacts here. Get that out. It was a ball. <laughs> so the ball is on the back side. Set of brushes in there. I would say it needs some good cleaning, wouldn't you? There's a switch that moves it. That grease is kind of turned into more of a a plastic. <laughs> yeah, so let's uh I might put this in the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm not sure if it's going to show or not. This is the little slider that I took off the switch itself. The switch. So green those contacts are. And that's probably why we don't have a headlight. This, this fits in a little plastic sleeve and then the plastic sleeve slides over those contacts. And either the ties, you know, the two bottom ones together or the, or the two top ones together and one's probably high beam and low beam. 
they are not conducting anything right now. What we probably can do is just turn on the lights. Yeah, I wonder if we just kind of cross that, those little tits. You get a test light out too, but let's see if you just kind of go across any of those. I don't see the they coming on. I don't think the bike needs to be running either. Hmm. Key has to be in. Yeah, you can grab a Tesla. I'm gonna see if we have any power up there. Got uh, the other end hooked up to the negative in the battery post, and then I made sure my light was working. I would think the center post would be the one that would. Can't do anything. It'll turn on. I figured the center would be the one that. Center's got voltage. It's low. You see the. It's not gonna be all that bright because it is six volts. Seems kind of lower than. Let me check it to the battery. I don't think it's all that much difference. All right, so power's going to the switch. I'm just looking to see if that headlight turns on. So I say we clean that switch up, get this back together, and then we'll, once we know we have power going back out of the switch, we will check the headlight. I wonder if the headlight might need to be grounded too. That might be the issue. It's just kind of floating out there. I already sprayed it down. pretty good hopefully I can squeeze all that stuff back together it's a little spring that goes inside that sucker disintegrated when I went to try to go clean it up Actually, I just picked it up and it folded in on itself what about the spring of a pen all right it's a deal you don't want to come out I'll make you come out will make me cut you in half wire cutters Back to you guys up about an inch. Ain't too much shaky camp in the, the bench we're having to stand. Let me say we go right about. I would think the spring's on this side. Now what do we do? Ha, <laughs> ah, there's no prize. What do you think? I have a fair feeling it's gonna be a little too big. That sucks. Gotta go shopping in the hoard. That spring hoard pays off. That's what we got. What do you think we go? Don't need much. That's the, the longer it is, the harder it's gonna be to assemble. Spin it around. I'll just come obviated. Jam that in there. So that's where with the spring falling out. Now we got to get like ten pieces together at the same time. And that guy. Just have a check wall. Okay. Suck. That's what we need. Worry about the ball later. Let's get it all started. They stick it like on a maybe a piece of tape and pull the tape out after. 
I think, think that might work. I think maybe I should stop doing what I'm doing right now. Maybe try to tape that ball into the end. The wires are fighting me. You get the feeling you're being watched. Yeah, man. Came out a lot easier than it goes in, right? Now we gotta get. Try to get these stars. Yeah. Where's the little screwdriver? Is it up here? Of course not. It's way down there. I'm gonna lose everything again. Most of you guys start swearing. Now we got to get that little guy. You know I'm gonna launch that sucker. Ah, <laughs> oh, you suck. Buried in the grease. I ain't gonna wrestle with that without you staring over my shoulder. Turn the lights off for a minute, just so we can kind of see. It does, where's the switch? Yeah, uh, uh, tape is what ended up working good. I ended up taping, going over to the bench, putting a piece of the ball on a piece of tape, tape sticky side up, then set the switch over the top of it and folded the tape up and cut off the excess, fed that down into the socket, and then got it screwed into place and then took a pick and just uh, picked the tape back out of there. So now it's got the detents. Anyway, where we're going is, the Henley does work. But as you can see, the brightness of that is a ridiculously nil. So one of two things I think is going on, one of three things. Either we just have a very poor ground, that's a 12 volt bulb, and it's got a six volt battery, or the bike is supposed to be 12 volts, and there is a six volt battery that was in the bike, and I just kind of was going off of that. So let's go figure that out. So I looked, the flasher says six volts on it, and that guy says, I don't know if you can see it right there, that says 6V3535 on that bulb. It's a six volt bulb too. We could do, maybe we'll take the jumper pack, the, or the battery charger, and we'll put six volts directly to it, see how bright it gets. So this is the uh, six volt battery charger. Let's go see what we got. That looks a bit brighter. Yeah, that is much brighter than what was on the bike. I disconnected the battery from the circuit. Now it's just the battery charger running the electrical system on the bike. Let's see if it... Nah. It's not that because it's still doing the same thing. Let's go high low. My high low ain't high lowing. I have a feeling I get that socket on there wrong. Probably touching. Probably touching both of them together. Take the gas tank off just to let us get in there a little bit better. It's got to come off anyway. So this, I kind of just washed out this part of the switch. I'm kind of looking. Uh -oh. <laughs> I think I just did it. Anyway, so I was probing for power. It is coming into the center now. I wasn't getting anything a second ago. We're in, might as well 
go the rest of the way, right? Comes a little metal tab that runs across. That's gonna be fun to put back together, ain't it? Well, the other one sucked. All right, so I know that battery is junk, and uh, right now it's disconnected. And the battery, that's the battery. So I split it, and now the, just the battery charger is going to the negative and the positive of the bike. And if you see, the battery charger puts out eight volts, and really should be around seven, seven and a little change anyway but when you turn the power on to the system it goes down to five turn the lights on it goes down to four turn the big light on it goes down to three so we just do not have enough power coming out of the bike to power everything on the bike and so until the new battery comes in we get that guy in there that can kind of maintain that type of voltage for a little bit when we're working on it I think that we are chasing kind of gremlins. But I already started taking some of the bulb sockets apart for the directionals and cleaning them up. So they got mud daubers and everything in them too. So I'm going to clean all those up, all four around, just so I know that they're good. Because uh, by looking at that one, I know the rest of them are needed. You didn't think I was going to get it all back together, did you? It's actually easier than the other one. A little bit of that. Make the party happy. Alright. Turn to that carb a little bit just to correct its woes. I had the um, float lid 180 out. I don't think it really makes a difference, but wanted to show what is happening as far as the choke. So this thing has kind of throw it together quick. This float. Then there's this guy. That was called a tickler. On the end, it's a little rod that you can push down. What that does is normally the, the needle on the, the float stops the fuel from coming in. That's where the fuel comes in. So that stops the flow uh, from coming in. But if you physically push the float down away from that, it'll allow more fuel to go in. And the more fuel goes in, so say the fuel level, you guys can see this. Say hopefully the, the, the fuel level is probably about right there in normal but if you push the um, tickler down push the float down the float bowl is going to fill up more fuel and it's just going to dump fuel right into that hole as the level goes up high enough and that just pours into the carburetor and uh, gives you a big like primer shot to take off well, what i'm surprised is that uh, i found a lot of times the two strokes especially when it's colder you know 40 degrees or so they seem to need to kind of put them on the choke and you got to run them on the choke for a minute or two to kind of get them to go. This thing, it starts like the first kick after, you know, dumping a little bit of raw fuel on it, but then it settles right into a nice idle. It's not all kind of funky and, you know, like you're, you're feathering the choke a little bit on something and warm it up and you're revving it and let it see where it wants to go back on an idle. It's not there yet. You're kind of revving it a little bit. This just seems to thump right into place and go. So I kind of like that. I like that setup. I like that setup as long as it works with, you know, whatever was, um, whatever its application is on. If it doesn't work, then that would suck. I'm looking for scratches. It's a little tore up on this wall right here. It was kind of hanging. I'm going to go look at the slide too and just do a little bit of polishing. Probably some scotch bright or something and uh, get rid of whatever ridges we have that it was hanging up on. Working on that carb, the slide, not the carb off, and took it apart, cleaned it up one more time, and put it back together. Was still doing it. It's not really the cable that's kind of dragging. It was the slide binding on on the housing. And uh, someone said, uh, you know, watch out for the oil tube; it could be bent too. I when I took it apart, I did bend it, but I straightened it out before I put it back together. So it really wasn't hanging up on that. But more the bore, you kind of, the reflection should be showing it, even in the picture. The, uh, you can see like the little scuffing that's on it. So I just kind of went over it with um, like 1200 grit uh, wet sanding paper. And I put oil on the uh, sandpaper and I just kind of cleaned them both up. Took a little file to the top. There's a little nick in the top and one of the grooves. Took care of that. 
should go back to idle now. Let's get to that part of the show. I'm going to wind her down. I pretty much want to wait for some components to come in. I want to get the tune-up parts, the points condensers, and uh, the correct battery, and et cetera, et cetera. Make sure that I want to make sure that the drivetrain is good. Uh, one of the things that kind of came up was, I guess, when they start getting higher miles, there's a bushing that wears out that takes out fourth gear, makes it jump out of fourth gear. And if you remember in the beginning of this, when I was kind of going through the gears, it was like, it was weird. It was like neutral. I was way down here somewhere in um, like past fourth gear. I guess it was always in there. I didn't know. And... Um, I put it back in, it popped into fourth, and then, you know, we went three, two, one, zero, then back up again, it was okay. But I'm a little cautious about the fact that it was not in fourth gear when that lever was all the way down. And that possibly might be the issue with this, although it says very low miles. It says 2,000, 2,300 miles on it. So whether that's <laughs> around once or not, who knows. Uh, so I'm not sure on that. So I'd like to make sure that it runs good and the drivetrain is okay. Like someone's saying it's smoking on one side. There's a seal inside that goes bad, etc. Uh, that I put oil down the cylinders when I first started spinning the motor. So I, I physically put oil into the system, and it may have just kind of pissed right through and was sitting uh, in the muffler and kind of as it fired up, it was burning that stuff off. Because later, actually in the beginning here, I know I didn't have it on camera, but it was. Uh, pretty clean, just light on, on each side. I think that part's okay. So that's it. Uh, not sure what I want to do with you know, paint and that kind of stuff. Uh, you're going to go and paint the tanks, try to get stickers. Somebody wants to, I mean, want to volunteer to make stickers. <laughs> there you go. Uh, or the other thing is just kind of wet sand it try to knock off as much as the black as possible wherever the black stays you leave it you know where the red starts wearing through stop and do the same with like the wheels and you know clean the chrome up clean the engine up as best as possible and then it actually kind of match all the way across it, it's gonna it'll be a patina bike you know it'll have it'll have those things showing but you know where do you go you, you rattle can it it'll look like a rattle can bike when you're done it'll be okay but uh you spend big bucks and you do it and to me it's just not worth that to me. You know. What do you think? I think that'll just buff out. Fine. It'll be fine. Alright, stop picking. <laughs> so you know, just kind of scratch them down. You can paint them black if you wanted to, but I'd probably just leave them uh scotch brighted and you know run what we gun run what we got. I think it is the wrong tail light. Uh, I'm not sure of that. It just seems like this thing is fairly large for what it is and this scene this thing seems like it is a homemade backstop of sorts so possibly that may not be correct and tires i gotta look at uh, getting tires for it too tires and tubes and that's after we make sure that that's okay all right guys i'm rambling again thanks for all kind of hanging out and checking it out and uh, having a little fun in the garage and hope you feel like you're just hanging out wrenching with me in the garage that's the idea all right till next time later